Hello, everybody, and welcome again to The Risk Matrix with myself, Dr. Martin, and Mr. James Junkin. James Junkin got a great guest, personal friend. Dr. Simon Goncharenko is in the house. You're in the Matrix, baby. But we'll get to you in a moment. Well, he's been here before, so, oh, so he's an old hat at this. But we've got some new stuff to talk about today with Dr. Simon. Um, but before we do that, we're going to go to James because he's got some important announcements about Dr. Simon and about an event coming up for Veriforce. Look, I am super excited. The Veriforce 2024 New Orleans Select Client Series event will be go ongoing uh, May 15th and 16th at the Higgins Hotel across the street from the World War II Museum. And Dr. Simon will be there. He'll be presenting his game-changing session, Hot to It, Human and, uh, and Organizational Principles in Practice. He's one of our uh, breakout speakers, along with a whole host of others. Uh, I'm really excited about the slate that we have. If you're interested, come on out, check us out. It's veriforce.com forward slash NOLA dash client dash series. The Risk Matrix will be live at this event on the 15th, live from NOLA, live guests, live audience participation. So come see me and Dr. Simon, along with all of our other friends at Veriforce and a really, really rock star panel of speakers over the uh, those two days. So welcome, Dr. Simon, again to our show. We've got some exciting news uh, that has come from you. Um, namely, you you published a book, and uh, so we're going to talk about that today. Um, but I'm going to let I'm going to let James, since he actually got your name right twice now in a night, once before the show and once on the show. I'm going to let him do it again so that he he gets it in his his muscle memory there and tell us a little bit about his about your book because I know that he's uh, got an advanced look at it. Yeah, man. Welcome, as we said earlier, to the Risk Matrix, Dr. Simon Goncharenko, which is good for a dude from Alabama to be able to spit that out. That's an accomplishment. My mother would be proud. Uh, Simon serves with uh, Dr. Martin and myself on the Veriforce Strategic Advisory Board, known Dr. Simon for many, many years. He currently is a safety specialist in data center construction, a uh, good friend, and now author, author of a book named Save Lives, Pushing Boundaries in Human Factors. And we're Dr. Martin and I are super fans of, of human organizational performance, human factors. It's a it's really a an area that that I, I'm extremely interested in, always learning. And tell us about your book. What prompted you, Dr. Simon, to write this book? Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for allowing me to share a little bit. I am obviously super pumped about it um, and uh, super pumped about the part that uh, you guys actually played in it coming about. And believe it or not, uh, I was going to look up the actual chapter number. Uh, I'll be able to uh, probably tell you here in a little bit, but there's actually one of the chapters here that starts with uh, mentioning uh, you guys, both of you by your names and the risk matrix. So uh, it's in here no. in the book. Uh, and uh, uh, but what what kind of prompted or started the the whole process, you know, a few years back, uh, probably about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, I got intrigued with this whole area of human and organizational performance, human factors and and uh, been doing a lot of research and uh, have been doing a little bit of training as well. And um, I guess it was uh, last summer or so I got invited uh, to participate in a in a um, podcast like yours, except this one was led by two uh, more, I would consider them more on the level of uh, more layman safety professionals, right? So these are the guys that uh, maybe don't have the fancy, you know, degrees or certifications or whatever. And in the course of the conversation, we had a really lively conversation and in the course of the conversation the cool part about it actually was that uh, we did it on our lunch breaks and uh it was three of us and two of the guys were actually in their trucks right they were filming from their trucks from the lunch breaks sorry it was just a a very cool very we call real, those real safety professionals that's what man. i'm talking about that's i mean it. it was awesome it was like real raw and real real right it was like yeah. really i mean it was fresh and and um 
And I mean, we had all kinds of technical difficulties, you know, because these guys were in their trucks. And so it was just, I mean, it was awesome. It was the, the whole thing was a lesson in perseverance. But, but I, in the course of the conversation, one of the guys um, made a statement and he said, dude, if you, uh, if you had a safety book, I'd buy it right now because of some of the things that we were discussing and, and, and the concepts we were um, kind of playing around and everything. And, and uh, I kind of, you know, I kind of put that in the back of my mind and I thought, okay, but what would I have to offer? You know, because the field, as you've mentioned, James, the field, you know, is pretty well saturated. We should put it this way, I guess, between, you know, Geller and Conklin and, and uh, Holnagel and Decker. And I mean, the list just kind of goes on with all the uh, reason, you know, and all the other guys that have contributed to the field and have been contributing for a while. And I thought, what could I possibly have to offer? And then I kind of kept mulling over it. And I thought, well, actually, it was that podcast with those two safety dudes that, and that's literally what it's called, two safety dudes. That's the name of their podcast. But it was- We got to get was, those dudes on our podcast. I know, you should. I, I'll, I'll definitely link you up. I mean, it'd be really cool. I think y'all would enjoy it. But it was that podcast with those two safety dudes that also, I think, provided another idea for me. And I thought- uh, you know, yeah, the field of human factors, as far as far as the books are concerned, is well saturated. But the target audience of a lot of the resources that's out there requires some pre understanding in the subject, requires some education, requires some knowledge, you know, and and some prior reading on the subject. And so I thought the thing that's not there that's missing is you don't have a resource that will take the concepts developed by these great guys that have gone before us and put it down on a lower shelf, put it down on a level where, you know, any old safety dude will pick up the book and just be able to read. I am so glad you said that, you know, that's been my sort of criticism with theory all along, you know, whether it's ISO 45,001, Z10, safety one, safety two, all this stuff that goes around all the time. That in this in, that you see in a lot of academic circles, and frankly, in non-academic circles, when we get to conferences, mm-hmm. you know, this is conference season coming up. Every conference is going to have somebody out there talking about some of these topics. But man, my big question's always been, "Hey, that's great, but help me implement this in a yeah. company with 150 people yeah. when I am struggling just to get some of these guys to wear PPE and have a yeah. basic JSA." And you've kind of yeah. solved for that, Dr. Martin. That That's just uh, the understanding piece, Simon, but the application piece, that's what's missing. How do I apply this? Stop telling me about the theory. Stop Stop saying we're going to have this summit on safety one safe versus safety two, and we're going to see who wins and, and duke it out on the big stage. I don't care. If, if I'm a safety dude or safety gal or whatever, I want to know, Make it make it the short version. What does it mean? Yeah. And how do I apply it? Give me yeah. some real world examples of how it's going to work. Because if it's not going to work, if it's just all kind of this this heady stuff that we talk about on the stage, stage, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it as, as somebody with a doctorate. If I can't use it, I'm not putting it in my toolbox to carry around. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Well, no, I'm 100% agree with that. And that's why, like, it was funny because after I finished my book, I... I um I went to my bookshelf and I picked up uh, Conklin's pre-accident investigation book or whatever and I I compared the lengths and the lengths look very similar but I hit in eight or nine chapters and you know you guys have read a lot of books the average chapter length is about twenty to thirty pages and that's exactly what Conklin did in his book which is absolutely you know normal for a PhD. My book has like 24 chapters and some of these chapters are literally like four pages long because I'm not about putting out a dissertation. I'm about, you know, giving you the summary of an idea and then giving you some ways that that can be implemented and just then letting you. And that's the other thing that I'm trying to, you know, we live in an information age where we have so much information available at our fingertips and yet we live in an age where that my kids' ages and, and some of the other younger people, we 
they, they do not know how to do research. Either, either they don't know how to do it or they refuse to do it. And so it's a really interesting paradox. We have the most information available and yet we're the most uninformed generations that are coming out right now. And so that's the other thing I'm trying to maybe contribute towards, right, with this book is I've given some ideas and I'm telling people, hey, you're interested in this more? Go Google it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so sometimes I, I think in our information age, there's 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 such a thing as there's just so much. There's yeah. so much. And that's right, overwhelming. That yeah. it becomes overwhelming in order to just Google it. You want somebody to just just tell it to me straight, Dr. Yeah. Simon. What is this about? How do I apply it? And how do I get to the crux of the matter? Because I think that we've taught our young people uh, that yeah you can go to the internet and you can find anything but is it going to be true and is it going to be right yeah. and, and, oh, absolutely. and um you know again i love a good theory just like the next person but but if if i got to carry it around and it's got no utility i'm not going to do it just not well, well we all flat know earth is a theory but that doesn't mean it's true right yeah and so and dr martin likes to say on her show uh on this show she she she's it just depends. That's her phrase word. Mine, mine of course, uh, yes, you, know, you know what mine is, but it just depends. And so when we look at your book, I am captured by the, and we're going to show it on Amazon and where, where you can purchase it, but the title, Save Lives, Save Lives. How did you come up with that title? Well, it's interesting that you would ask that question because believe it or not, you actually were one of the individuals that was in the back of my mind. You got in my mind, James. I don't know how I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> sounds terrible. That sounds, it sounds awful. It sounds frightening. Somehow okay. you got it's a nightmare. real estate in He's my gonna brain. Need I don't therapy. know how, but anyway. <laughs> no, but I think I, literally as I, and it's interesting that you asked that question because I actually dive into that subject in the very beginning, in the introductory matter of the book, because the the first that was one of the first questions after I've kind of resolved in my mind what the book is going to be about and kind of what the target audience is going to be. And so that that led me think, okay, maybe there is a need for it. The immediate next question in my mind was, okay, what am I going to call it? And and some people think, well, why is that a big deal? The the my dissertation that I ended up publishing, I actually submitted to the to the uh, traditional publisher several years back, and they helped me to come up with the title. So I didn't even know what the title was going to be. But this one, I had to know. And so I kind of started thinking through different things. And, and, and then I think your like, your picture and your words that you continue to remind us in our meetings and conversations that we have about your passion to bring workers home safely from high hazard environments, that was kind of going through my mind. And I thought, I know, the title has to be save lives because I think there in no small part, you know, safety professionals are, if you think about, about ultimately saving lives, but I think it goes, but I think, you know, that's outside or, or it goes beyond just the scope of a safety professional. I think anyone that works, whether it's, you know, HR or operations or any other role, they should care about that too. We all right. should be safety professionals, Right. Because mm -hmm. that's that's the mature organization. That's that's how it operates. And so, uh, incidentally, the funny thing about it, James, is when I kind of finally settled, yeah, it's going to be save lives. Uh, my LinkedIn banner had actually said that for like three or four months prior to that. It's just mm -hmm. a black background with the word save lives on it weird i don't even know how that like all came together but it just and when i landed and i was like of course it has to be that it, it's been on my banner <laughs> yeah that's awesome now there's a second part of this title which i really like is a safety outlaw pushing boundaries in human factors so we always like to be innovative. We like to challenge the status quo. We like to look at these trends and say, how can we get better? How does your book push boundaries? Well, I think, and that's and that's that's another good point, another good question, because that brings me to um, I think the second thing uh that's different. And and by the way, um, in the introduction to the to or one of the early chapters, I actually talk about how 
this book is not like other human factors or safety books. And I give, you know, five things that makes it unique. One is scope, two is target audience. I've already mentioned that method, style, and author. And but but what what contributed to that subtitle, I guess, pushing boundaries, and what also convinced me that maybe there is room for one more safety book out in the market is the fact that as a process of my research and training and and reading and looking uh, and considering this topic over the last few years, I realized that maybe we're the traditional human factors conversation do not go far enough. I think it's more than just proper design of machinery. I think it's more than just ergonomics. I think it's more than just the initial factors. I think, you know, I, I think it should the, the the I think it should include our off the job activities. And people go, well, how dare you talk about off the job activities? My employer doesn't own my off the job time. And that's true. But I have one body. So when I trash it out on the weekend, when I drink and party and do all that stuff and I get three hours of sleep, how am I expecting myself to be with it enough on Monday morning or to be effective or efficient or accurate or reliable or even safe or engaged, you know, and the list can kind of kind of continue. So so that's, I think, what contributed to that second subtitle is that, you know, I tease and ask questions and suggest topics that go way beyond gratitude. I mean, we gratitude is way outside of the realm of safety, right? We don't ever talk about gratitude. Yet, if you talk to the psychologists, they will tell you the tremendous impact that gratitude has on your overall well-being. So does it have a place? So these are the kinds of things that I'm just kind of teasing a little bit uh, in my attempt to push boundaries. And I need a, I need a copy. Dr. Simon. <laughs> so I'm going to have to order it from you, though, because I'm going to want it signed. Um, I, I want to correct you. Uh, th there is always room for one more safety book. OK. However, I'm going to go back to my original assertion in that the safety books that need to be coming out now have to be applied. OK. Again, we can talk about theories. We can write another book. Decker can write another book on his thing. Conklin can write another book on his thing. Unless I can't put it to use, it means nothing to me. And, and by and large, the safety profession, despite what we think from looking on LinkedIn or the circles that, that maybe I revolve in or you revolve in or James revolves in, um, most, of, most of the people pract practicing are the safety dudes. Okay, the safety right. dudes and the safety gals. And so so while they may go to a conference or not, or not, and they hear the basics of this this debate on this or that, the other thing, really honestly, they're there to get points. They're there to maybe uh network or or drink some beer or do whatever with their colleagues, but but where the rubber hits the road and what they really need is how do I apply it? Okay. They're not, they're not Dr. Dr. Uh, Martin and Dr. Goncharenko and, and James Junkin sitting around the table and talking about the Dr. James Junkin, not well, future Dr. Be. James Junkin. Future, future. They, they are the people who are in their trucks on the road, have 15 sites and have very little time to read intricacies, 30, 40 page chapters on I hate to say it, just science, garbage science, any kind of science they want to read about how do I do my job better and save lives. So there is room for more safety books. It's just just they need to be the well, right. Well, I think that's where Dr. Simon fills this gap. And I'm so super excited about his book because you know, there are real challenges the safety dude has. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and and I love Conklin, I love Decker. You know, uh, I'm a huge fan of reason, but sometimes, particularly when we start looking in construction or oil and gas industries, these high risk industries, this work is not being performed by a company that has 5,000 employees, 50 safety professionals, time to sit around in committees, think about uh, employee engagement and go down through all the I ISO, you know, man, we're just, we're struggling. We're out there in the field. There's two of us. There's 150 of you. 
you're doing a uh, lockout tag out today. You're going in confined space today. Man, I woke up this morning worried about whether or not I was going to get you all home safe. Now, yeah. we've done the prevention side. We've got training. We've got policies. We've got audits. We've got rules that we yeah. follow. But on the other side of this, we're dealing with human beings. And human beings don't always follow the rules. Work's not always what works not always linear like we we've learned from Decker and 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 Conklin and those guys, right? Work is very dynamic. So dealing with human beings is something I think when we 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 got to make the work human, right? And then I have to be able to take your book and apply it. And that's where I've struggled as safety professional over the years, even though I'm a big fan is how how do I take this and right size it for my organization based on the resources that I have available to me? Because not only do I have to change this organizational culture away from the workers at fault for everything to, hey, we got systems issues here that we need to look at as well and get them drug tested and get their safety orientation and conduct the site uh, assessments I have to do today and you know, mm -hmm. make recommendations for improvement and do training. It's a lot on the safety dudes. It's yeah. a lot. So I applaud you for taking that on because too many times I think uh, we're in our own head academically. We're in our head and we forgot what it was like to put on a pair of steel toe boots and go out and have a JSA meeting at 645 in the morning. Yeah, we, 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 maybe we four page that. paper is all they've got time for that day. That's I mean, it. four page a chapter, you know. Yeah, or not, or yeah. not. Right? True. Maybe they got they maybe they got time for the list, yeah. and and so that uh, that's why I'm kind of a big fan of of the applied approach, yeah. and and I, I I can't wait to I can't can't wait to dig in. So, and you know, it's funny too, James, because um, you started the podcast today with kind of talking about the NOLA event. Uh, the exciting thing, what, what kind of gets me excited and jazzed up about that uh, particular event, too, is that um, when you when you and I first talked about it, I actually sat down one afternoon after our conversation and I put my book down and I thought, OK, what are some specific pointed questions I can ask? Because that's what I'm going to do is rather than theorizing, I'm just going to ask questions. These are the practical implications of what we're talking about. And man, I started writing them down, James, and one page went down, second page went down. After the fifth page, I was like, I think I've got enough questions. <laughs> we got enough for our 45 minute session. It's <laughs> back next book. year for part two. He <laughs> studies to Dr. Simon's book, right? <laughs> right. Right. Well, Simon, it's been great having you on. What I'd like to do is, even though this is a podcast so to speak it's a video cast they can see us on youtube they can also see us on spotify is to share my screen and tell people where they can get the book the book is here on amazon so if you can see my screen they're saving lives pushing boundaries in human factors you can go to amazon pick that book up you see it's reasonably priced i'm a hardcover guy myself but it's there in kindle it's there in paperback and compared to some of the other books that we'll discuss to you about the theory that are 65, 75, 125 bucks, this is pretty much in anybody's budget. A couple less trips to McDonald's and we're good to go <laughs> with your book. One, one trip to McDonald's these days. <laughs> yeah, no Extra joke. Extra <laughs> fries, huh? Extra <laughs> fries. That's part of that Dr. Simon getting on me about taking care of yourself outside of work. Nutrition, baby. Nutrition, <laughs> baby. Nutrition. So there it is. It's there, save lives, pushing boundaries and human factors. Thank you for coming on, Dr. Simon. Uh, thank you for writing this book because thank this you. book is going to save lives. You'll never know how many people's lives you saved, but just trust me, it will. I sure hope so. Thank it you for will. having me. It will. So finishing up here on our show, thank you for listeners for coming in each week. And listening to us on our podcast, our video cast, they're on YouTube and also on Spotify. When you're on our YouTube channel at Veriforce, go over there and hit that like button and smash subscribe. That way you get alerts that tell you when the latest podcast drops. Every week on Tuesdays around noon, you can expect to see our podcast. We're also on Spotify. 
Uh, so I signed up on Spotify too. It gives us this cool alert. We got the cool Veriforce logo. It says wrist matrix on it. It reminds you, hey, we got a new episode. But thank you for listening. We do this for you to help you get workers home safe from high hazard jobs. So till next time, save lives and go save get lives. this book.